Hey everyone and welcome back to the Hair Healer Podcast, the weekly awakening. This is my weekly awakening for this week. I'm not even kidding you. I cannot take bedtime anymore. I'm serious. I'm sorry. Some nights that I do these during the week, I will have my kids and I come down here and I am not relaxed after trying to put them to bed. And if you have a child, I heard it gets better after the age of 10, but 10 and under, I might be wrong there. You know what I'm talking about, especially after working all day. It's just kind of crazy. And for whatever reason, bedtime is not easy. I'm telling you it's not. It's easy when they're babies. That is the truth. Once once they can start move around and get around maybe three or four, it is so bad. It's like, get to, I'm not doing this. I'm not brushing my teeth. I'm not getting in bed. I'm not doing this, you know? And then you get them rested. And it's like, I need water. I need this. I'm like, just go the fuck to sleep. I'm sorry. Isn't that why she wrote that book? Who was the author? I can't remember. Um, go the fuck to sleep because you just want to read that. <laughs> so that is my, that's how we're going to start it out this week, people. I'm just telling you that. Um, actually, I have a good, I have some good awakenings. I've been feeling pretty, pretty good. If you guys have been following, if you've been following the podcast, I did not drop an episode. It was a bye week this week. Um, I just decided to make it a bye week. Now, remember, before I get into the weekly awakening, please follow me on Instagram at the Hair Healer 1111 also follow me on Facebook, the Hair Healer Facebook page. If you want to be on the show, if you want me to talk about something, if you just want to make a comment, suggestion, please email me at the Hair Healer Podcast at yahoo.com. And don't forget, I had talked about it last week, I am on the AndoCast. Don't forget to do, go check that out. You can watch us on YouTube live on camera. We talk about all cr kinds of crazy stuff. And the one episode that just came out on Monday, we talk about um, drug addiction. Really, I met Andy 10 years ago in recovery and we talk about his story. He just celebrated, oh my God, I cannot remember because we recorded this episode back in January, but 18 years, I believe. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. We talk recovery, drug addiction, all kinds. So go check out, um, link in my bio, the AndoCast. How is everyone? How's everyone feeling? We have a mega exciting romantic week lined up um, for the world for hopefully half of you, right? At least half of you are having a good romantic time or hope to be. The other half, not so much. So we'll try that for a later transit. But this new moon that's coming in on Saturday, it's on Saturday the 13th. I think that's Saturday the 13th. Um, it's in Pisces and it's in there with Neptune and Venus, which are going to be, which are already in a conjunction and they're all going to be in a conjunction. So I have a lot of stuff that we are talking about and what kind of that means. So expect a very dreamy world, a dreamy, I don't know, a dreamy place, right? If you're in a romantic relationship, this is a good time to bring some romance to it, find some romance, find new ways to bring romance, right? Because in relationships, in love, when we get out of that almost that cocaine stage that I like to call it, the beginning stage, and we get comfortable, right? And especially years go on, we can sometimes say, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't feel like doing it or still ways, you know, go bad. So find a way if you're in a relationship to bring the romance alive again. If you're new, there's going to be maybe some romantic times. And if you're single, there might be some romance coming to you. That is exciting. Now, let me say with this Venus-Neptune conjunction, I always get a little nervous with this transit. I can't even say right now, but I can think at least three different times that this transit has happened. And I I get lost, right? I have Neptune in my, ha in my fifth house, right? The house of love, romance, creativity, children, blah, blah, blah. But how it relates to romance, for me, when Neptune is in there, Neptune is the, is the planet of um, illusions and delusions, I like to say. It is the planet that blurs boundaries, that's very dreamy, very, you know, Pis Pisces. It's very, it's all over the place. So it's with, with Venus, when we love, all of a sudden, I am like, <sighs> I have too many stories. I can't even get into what could be that. But if you know me, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like running off and thinking about marrying, I don't know, this guy that I probably had a crush on that was like at the gym, right? And I'll just kick and we'll talk and I'll believe and I'll just get carried away like I'm in a Disney movie. So that can happen too. So that's warned about that when we have this conjunction. Also, it is very dreamy, but our illusions and delusions can come about all of a sudden we're like oh wait holy shit again this big 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 lessons in my life are facing my illusions and delusions when I think I have a perception that someone or something is a certain way or our connection is a certain way and then all of a sudden it's like drop 
right? Nope. Drop that illusion, girlfriend. Drop that illusion. Who's acting out right now? Is it little Colleen coming out? Who's play? Who's coming out to play? It's like drop the illusion. So that can happen, okay? So if you are someone like me who can get carried away in their mind with romance, with things, you know, it might be like a wake up time also, you know? So look at this transit as more dreamy, more exciting, more romantic, but yet there is another side, but a much less side, right? This is actually a very good transit, but of delusions coming out, um, people not being authentic, disingenuous, uh, you're seeing the real side of the romantic situation. So that can happen too, because what the new moon brings endings and new beginnings, right? So there has to be an ending to new beginning. So with this new moon, though, we plant new beginnings. So where else can we bring romance into our life, right? It doesn't just necessarily have to be the romantic, you know, between partners and that kind of connection. So much comes from romance. I think last week I was talking about romancing the potential out of people. So how about we romance the potential in ourselves? How about we romance the potential in our creative projects with Venus there, right? How about we romanticize ourselves? That just came to me because what I'm thinking, if you are single, this would be a good transit to like, hey, how do I fall in love with myself? Why don't you go and take yourself on a nice dinner? Go find something that you want to do, right? So we can bring romance into anything in our life because what does romance mean? What does romance feel like, right? When romance is, is sexy and it almost feels like you're in a whole nother realm. You're not even paying attention to what's happening. So how can we take that into other avenues of our life to create beauty? Because so many wonderful things come from romance, just like they come from heartbreaks. So remember that. Now, let me talk about <laughs> a little bit into the weekly awakening that I've had. I think last week, if you've noticed, I didn't have the episode come out this week and I was off my social media. Some people announce it. I don't know when I'm going to be off of my social media. All I know is all of a sudden I get overwhelmed and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to check anything and I'm not going to go in anything and I don't want to look for anything and I just will just stop. I'll stop responding. I'll stop looking at it. It's almost like it all becomes overwhelmed and, and life is screaming at me like, Go live life. Stop behind here. Stop worrying about this, that, and the other and trying to figure out because I have a lot of social media across the board. Like, go live life. Like, all that's going to be there. And so I'll just, it, it happened Thursday morning. I was like, eh, I'm not checking anything. And, and it went until I think Sunday. And I lived life. I enjoyed. I had great conversations. I hung out with someone that came into my life that's newer and had an amazing time. I was with my kids and I was just like, this is what life is about, you know, and, and trying to, how can I find that balance again? How can I organize my life a little more? And I also got into a mindset of what is really important with what I'm creating and where I need to put my, with where I need to put my energy. So the weekly awakening this week, which was brought to you by a conversation I had someone in my life this week that really Again, I was feeling lost in what direction to take certain things and to go this way, this way, or the other. And they stopped me. And they were like, Colleen, just, just please stop. And I was like, okay. They're like, what are you doing? Why are you constantly creating in the future, right? As a manifester, I'm always, I'm, we're taught we're supposed to always be in the future creating, blah, 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 blah. But the truth behind that, yes, to a level we are supposed to do that, the truth behind that is what are we creating in the now? What are you creating in the now? He's like, this person said to me, wow, I love all your all your future ideas and I see that and I think that's beautiful. What are you doing today? What matters today? How are you? Don't even think about how you're going to get there. What are you creating today? What are you creating in the moment? And I think this goes perfect with the Neptunian transit we have with Venus, also working our creative pleasures in the moon. We want to be in the future. We want to be way out there. We want to see our dreams, our goals, our, the life that we want to live, you know, 10 years down the road and we want to manifest that. And how do we get that? How do we get to that? How do we do this? So take this planet, planet, take this transit, all right, and figure out how can I create in this moment, right? How can I create a romantic day with my partner or want to be partner or with myself or something in this moment? How can I create romance in my creative projects? How can I create romance with my friends, right? So take that, channel that into this moment. So figure out if you're like me, 
right now, if you're thinking 10 times ahead, whatever it is, if you want that house, that car, that job, that friend, that place, that person, that romantic partner, whatever it is, none of that's there. None of that, because tomorrow really is not there. This next minute, this next hour is not there. So what are you creating today? How are you creating that today? So ponder that, right? Feel feel that, especially as I talk a lot about um, old doors closing and new doors beginning. Now, today felt like spring here in the Philadelphia area. It was 62 degrees and I was like, oh my God, please get me outside. Please, please get me outside. So I hope everyone went out and enjoyed the weather because that is going to be um, the new beginning, right? This new moon, I think also is solidifying because we're almost to spring on the 21st. Okay, guess what? We closed We closed this chapter. We closed, hopefully, actually, not just hopefully, I know, the only winter in COVID, right? We closed that shit. We closed that door. So what are we manifesting in our life? What new beginnings are coming? What new beginnings are coming? Because there's going to be a lot of new, beautiful beginnings. So staying in the now, creating. Look, I'm looking at my little notes that I did here. What else did I write? What is important? Oh, um... Oh my God, I lost my thing. I was like, okay, it's the social media break. I'm like, you think that I would have so much to talk about. Um, and I do, but I just spent so much time living and thinking and creating. And okay, okay. I looked down here and I thought being a better parent. Look, you can tell I got distracted because I lost half of my notes. And I thought to myself, going back to how I tied in the front when I was laying with my kids, trying to put them to bed, my son said to me, I'm happy you're using your happy voice, not your angry voice. And it's like, oh my God, I can't um, believe that he even said that. I like how he put it that way, but also like how that's registering to him and how does that make him feel? And I looked down here at my notes and I said, being a better parent, because the notes that um, I'm looking at over here, because I have 1500 notebooks, are, are things that I want to create in the now, right? Um, I am not perfect. I am the hair healer, but I come from from a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of darkness, a lot of character defects, a lot of patterns, a lot of things. I am so far from perfect. I make lots of mistakes. I will make mistakes for the rest of my life. That's what we're supposed to do. That's how our soul evolves. And as a mother, as a mother of two wonderful, rambunctious little boys, teach kids are our greatest teacher okay they see in us when we look at our children we see our own wounds we see the reflection we see the places we need to grow where we don't need to grow constantly every day I'm like showed in my face oh my god use your knife nice voice not your mean voice and I look down being a better parent because that is something I I've been writing down on my manifestation list is constantly being the right parent for my kids or being the parent that they need and they both need two different people, believe it or not, they need the loving core. They need their loving core self mother, but they both need kind of two different versions of me in a certain way, right? And and both react differently and both have different emotional needs and different things are important to them. So then we take just one, now we have to consciously parent two. And that can be so hard because honestly I go 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 all day every day seven days a week yes it's my own doing yes most of the time I love it but my kids get the brunt of it let's be honest and I think I'm not the only one here as a working parent like who gets the brunt you know the, our kids do in a certain way right because I'm tired I was thinking today all they wanted was my attention that's all and I was driving them around I was doing the kid I took my son to Code Ninja, I took my other son here my Remy took a nap and he was really mad when he woke up and then I went grocery shopping and then I got home and I put them to bed and I did this and did that and, and, and running around and each time they're just like, mommy, I want attention, mommy, I want, they're not saying that, but it's coming out in different ways. And especially in the ways I don't like that get me to react. And I just think, no, what do they need in this moment? You know, because you remember Colleen, every month you write down being a better parent. That's how important it is because you know, I look at their little faces and I'm like, I just want to do the best I, I ever could. I was a young mother. I knew nothing. I think I had two years clean. I just started growing up myself and I had Abram and we've grown up together a lot, a lot, a lot. And, and I every day just strive to be the best mother. And it's funny, I think because with this new moon, right? The one of the things the moon rules is 
mothering mother or environment and I think to have it's in a pleasant spot so right now so the parenting thing came up so what ways with Venus in there too um can we romanticize our parenting right how you know I don't know if that's actually the right term romanticizing your parenting how can we find joy in our parenting again you know and if you feel joyless in your parenting um, where is that coming from? Because it most likely is coming from something inside of you as well, as well as the outside, right? Just the generic us going through the parent working COVID movements every day. But it's just hard, right? It's just hard. So what I'm going to do and how I'm going to tie this back full circle is tomorrow night when I put my kids to bed and they want to drive me crazy, I'm going to say, where that's find the joy how can you make this joyful right instead of looking at this perception instead of going to because i'm already dreading it now but hey colleen let's have a let's have a shift of perception right because that's important again that's the neptunian just to tie it into your week a uh, big shift in percep perception i'm gonna say it right now i'm gonna put my kids to bed tomorrow night and it's gonna be great we're gonna laugh it's gonna be funny they're gonna listen it's gonna be amazing and i'm gonna bring joy to that because one day I don't want to look back and and feel like I missed out on that or look back and my kids be like, you are horrible at bedtime, blah, 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 blah. And it's funny because Abram, the other day we were driving and I brought something up to him and he brought something up to me and I can't, it's too personal, I can't speak about it, but it's something he remembered that happened to him in childhood at around three and two and a half, I would say it was it was an ongoing thing that was going on currently in, in our lives from the time he was two and a half to three and a half, four. And I was like, it, it, I froze and I was like, what? You remember that? You're, uh, you're not supposed to remember that. <laughs> they said you don't start remembering things, only your subconscious memory remembers things when you're five and under. How do you remember that? And that was a reality call because as parents, yes, it's hard, but the way we live, the way we act, the way we react is what our kids are going to be doing. And I do not want them to make the same mistakes. And I don't want to hurt them the same ways that I was hurt. <laughs> I honestly have no idea why I went there this week. Apparently, I was supposed to. Whoever's listening may need to hear that because all of a sudden, or maybe I need to hear it. And I said this before, half the time I'm speaking on here, saying things that I actually need to myself. And that is something that is constantly on my mind is, and one of the things I can feel insecure about is my level of parenting. And am I a good enough parent? Again, I have a cancer in, I have Venus in cancer. So that parenting and mothering is, is very, very important to me. And it's funny too, this week, and we had the moon and right now, today, currently, um, the moon's in Aquarius, but it wasn't Capricorn. This whole week has been very funny. Something you don't know about me is, or maybe you already do. If you're a good friend of mine, you do, or maybe you just observe this about me. I am the most confident, insecure person in the room. Now, I've worked a long way. I've come a long way from my insecurities, a lot. I'm really not too much, but it, they still creep up. And I can walk in front of a room of a thousand people and talk, and you would have no idea. But they still come up, and it seems, you know, when the moon's in its Capricorn or in various positions that it's not happy in, I'm like, the thoughts that come up are like these these, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not doing this enough. I'm not this enough. Why does this person, this person hates me. This is that, this is that. And that's something, um, especially working on the Ando cast is, and putting my voice out there and, and I'm okay. If you don't like me, I'm always like, you know, F off, blah, blah, blah. But it's been interesting having to, the more I put myself out there, the more I get more opinions and you're just not going to please everyone. You're really, really not. And that's going to be okay. Some people, you're going to please, and then all of a sudden you're going to offend them. And some people are going to do this, and you're going to offend them. So it's always this, this fine balance. And, so, and what keeps coming up is like, my words, or am I offending, or is that good enough? Or maybe I shouldn't have said that to that person, or should I say that to that person? Should I do that when I just want someone to say, no, Colleen, shh, shh, be quiet, stop, be quiet. Because guess what? None of that even matters anymore. Just believe that you said what you need to say, you did what you needed to do, and be confident that you had the reaction or the encounter or the connection that was meant to happen. That was meant to happen. And all of that today, you know? So to tie back into the weekly awakening of staying in the now, stay in the now of your creations, stay in the now of what you want to create and how can you create something 
to work towards your dream, okay? Stop staying way, way far out in the dream and only creating out there. Bring it back to today and only create. And then focus, what can I do to be a better person today? What can I do to be a better mom today? What do I need to do to bring romance into my life? And again, I don't just mean relationship-wise, just bring some sort of that romantic energy, right? Think of a nice summer storm with the lightning and just the way that smells and you're feeling good and it's warm and you just want to dance in the rain and not get electrocuted, okay? Bring that kind of vibration into your life this week. We're headed towards spring. It's beautiful here. Things are opening up. So find those ways to bring romance into the moment, into the now, into today, because that's all you have. And if you're stressing about romance, again, I talked to, bounced around between kids and romance. All you have is today with that partner or or non-partner, new partner, old partner, whatever kind of partner it is. All you have is today. So figure out how you can bring romance into today. How can you bring your relationship alive today? How can you bring happiness into your relationships today? How can you create from all of this today? All right. I think you got the point. You're like, all right, Colleen, that's enough today's. <laughs> that's what I just said to myself, actually. Um, so that is the, that's the weekly awakening, everyone. Enjoy your new moon, whatever you do for your rituals, you know, um, manifestations, whatever it is. This is a beautiful new romantic beginning. Find the romance somewhere in your life. Write that out. And again, I'll say this and shut up. If you are someone who really wants love and you don't have love and you haven't had love, focus on that. Write a row, write out your idea of a soulmate, right? With this new moon in Pisces, with the conjunction of Venus and Neptune, this is a perfect time to draw out who is your idea of a perfect person. Not what they look like, you can add that, but how do they act? How do they make you feel? What do they do? What kind of wonderful things do they bring to your life? What is important to you? Get honest with yourself in a partner and look deep, look in the soul. Don't look at the ego, look in the soul and write out that list. That is a beautiful and wonderful manifestation list for this time. Okay, I'll leave it with that. I hope everyone has a, a beautiful week, a beautiful new moon full of romance. I hope everyone's enjoying the warm weather and, and finally feeling themselves again or this new version of who you are as we emerge out of COVID. Holy shit, it's been a year. When you're listening, it's been almost a year by this weekend. That is crazy to think about. All right, well, we survived a year. Who are you, right? Who are you now? Because you're not the person you were a year ago. I can promise you that. Who are you now? And fall in love again with that person that you are today. Thank you again. Make sure that you follow me on Facebook, The Hair Healer Podcast. Follow me on Instagram at The Hair Healer 1111. Follow on YouTube and across the board on Instagram and Facebook, the Ando cast. I hope everyone has a fabulous week. I love you all. Thank you and goodbye.